Hello, my name is Susie Beguine and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. I'm very honored to be speaking about this topic on early childhood education, which is very near and dear to my heart. I want to thank EJ from Movies for Mommies in Oakville for the opportunity to do this video and share my message with you. I'd like to start by first saying that I'm the owner of Alpha's Discovery Kids Preschool and Daycare, and we have two locations, one in Mississauga and one in Oakville. I'm currently located right now in one of our empty classrooms because we are closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a very challenging time for parents. As a mom who's working at home during this time of social distancing, I can relate to many other parents out there who may be experiencing challenges supporting their children at this time. Being at home with your child or children for 24 hours a day, seven days a week can be challenging. Not only are you sharing the space not only are you sharing the same space for the for a long period of time, but in addition, there's an expectation that you teach your child something while you're at home with them. And all of this, in addition to all of your other responsibilities at home, which might include homework, housework, working from home on a laptop, online meetings, cooking, grocery shopping, caring for other family members, there's so much that's expected. But perhaps I think the most stressful thing that most parents are concerned about is how to engage and educate your children while you're at home with them. I can say that as an educator of young children, I'd like to offer you some support, um, especially to all of you parents out there who are trying to support your children during this time. I think one of the best things you can do with your child at this time is play. Now I know this solution sounds really simple and you may have doubts about it, but I can assure you it's the best strategy and it's not difficult at all. For you to get excited about this, I think I first need to explain to you why, why play is so important for young children. Now play is critical for all children, but especially young children. Play is how children explore and learn about the world around them and how they acquire the skills to live in that world. During play is when most learning takes place. So let me give you five good reasons why you should engage in play with your kids. So first and foremost, like I said, is they're going to build skills through play. So every type of skill in every domain they're building as they engage in different types of play. The second reason is they're developing problem solving skills through play. Through their play, they are considering problems, developing solutions, testing their abilities and testing the boundaries. This all helps to make them a really good problem solver. Also through play, they're developing independence and cooperation. So if they're playing by themselves, they're learning independence. And if they're playing with others, then they're learning cooperation and understanding. Both types of play help children to understand their place in the world and their place in the larger group. Next thing they will learn is they'll learn how to learn. So play is an essential skill for developing the ability to concentrate and learning how to learn. And finally, play builds confidence. As children develop new skills through play, whether it's how to use scissors or how to pedal a tricycle, they're developing confidence in themselves with every new achievement. So there's many other reasons and many other benefits to play that I can't cover here today, but suffice it to say that all child development research points to the fact that children learn best through play. And given that play is so important for young children, let's talk about how you as a parent can engage in play with your young child. So as I said, my specialty is I'm an educator and I teach children under six years old. So that'll be the focus of this talk. But here are five things you can do to engage in effective play that results in learning for your child. So let's start with number one. The first thing you wanna do, and the third, first thing you should be aware of is that you should follow the child's lead and engage in play that the child wants to do and is interested in. So if your child is interested in cars and they want to play with cars, then you are picking up a car as well and becoming their play partner. 
Children's choice is key to play and it must be engaged in freely by the child. In other words, you cannot force a child to play. It must be freely chosen by the child. Sometimes this is hard for parents and even educators to understand. We have our own ideas about what we think they should do, how they should play and what they should learn. And we try to direct them a little bit too much. So resist the temptation to direct the play and become the teacher in the play. You need to be an equal play partner and that, and you should not take over or direct the play that is happening in any play situation. So the more you can follow the child's lead, the better the play experience will be for that child. Remember that a child will learn when they're enjoying what they're doing. And if play is not enjoyable, then the learning experience diminishes. So try to make it as enjoyable as possible by following their lead. So you may be asking, how do I teach them if I'm not officially a teacher, if I'm not directing? So this comes to point number two, which is the best way to provide education while playing with your child is to make it intentional through your conversation. Give your play some purpose through the conversation that you have with them. So try not to ask too many questions that are meant to have a specific answer. So what I mean by this is children don't want to be tested on colors when they're playing with cars. So instead of saying, what color is your car? You can say, I'm choosing the blue car and you're choosing the green car. Narrating the play and giving words to the items that you're playing with is a great way to build language and learn concepts such as colors. So you can teach any concept by narrating play. And once you get really good at narrating, you'll see the benefits and how the child responds to your narration by learning new concepts and new words. Narration is really key and getting really good at it takes practice. So give yourself some slack and just practice and um, keep working on it. You'll see that once you get really good at it, children learn a lot through your narration. Okay, so strategy number three is when you're having conversations with your child, another good strategy is to ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are the ones that don't have a specific right answer. Um, so it encourages creative and expressive answers. And there's no assumptions made when you're asking an open-ended question. So let me give you an example of this. So when a child is playing with some Play-Doh and let's say they make a big flat round disc, you might be tempted to say, is that a pizza or is it a cookie? Which is not open-ended because you made an assumption about what that item was. Instead, you can say, what did you make? And have some interest. The second question allows the conversation to expand beyond a yes or no answer. And it also encourages more critical and creative thinking. You could ask questions also that encourage your child to predict what's gonna happen next. So another example of this, you can ask a question like, what do you think will happen when I put my block on top of your block? This question may not have an answer. Your child may not answer it, depending on their interest in what you've said. But that's okay. You can answer your own question as well, or you don't have to answer it all and just keep the conversation going. So asking open-ended questions is a great way to teach. Another thing you can do and thing to be aware of is to play at the child's level. So what do I mean by that? It means to play at their physical level. So if the child is playing on the floor, then you are also playing on the floor. You're not standing up and towering over them or sitting on a chair above them. In order to be a true play partner, you need to be an equal. So you need to be at equal physical distance, which means you need to be at whatever level they are at. If they're sitting, then you're sitting. If they're standing, then you're standing. But try to stay close to their level. In essence, what you really want to do is here is to explore your inner child and have fun engaging in that play with your child. So the last thing I want to touch on is uh, when you're engaging with play, there's two types of play. There's free play and there's intentional play. 
So free play would be pretty self-explanatory where the child initiates the play and you're participating in it. Intentional play is something that you might initiate where the child participates. Now usually uh, free play will be initiated by the child um, and it'll be based on their own natural curiosity and interest. That's pretty self-explanatory. But I wanna go into a little bit more detail about what this intentional play involves and it has a lot to do with what we do in a daycare setting here. So here at Alpha's Discovery Kids, we use a curriculum called the Four Pillars of Learning. And I'm gonna go through it in a little bit of detail with you. So you can have an idea of what this intentional play is and you can do it even in your own home. So one of our first pillars is called language and literacy. And that's where we're teaching language and literacy skills through play. So how would we do this? So let me give you some examples of how we would do this. First thing and the easiest thing is you can read a book to your child. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Another thing you can do is have a child read a book to you. Now that's a bit of a different situation. The child may not even know how to read yet, but they're gonna teach you, they're gonna read a story to you. The important thing to remember here is when they're reading the story to you, let them read it the way they wanna read it. Do not correct them in the story. So if they are telling the story in their own way, let them be creative with it and let them um, tell the story the way they would like. Another thing you can do is you can have a salt tray or a sand tray and you can draw letters in the sand. Um, you can talk about the sounds that the letters make. You can make letters with Play-Doh. You can even go on an alphabet scavenger hunt through your house and look for things that start with the letters of the alphabet. So those are all different ways to engage in language and literacy play activities. Our second uh, pillar of learning here is called STEAM. Now STEAM stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So in all of those areas, you can develop activities that encourage learning. So for example, let's start with science. So you can explore science. Um, the best way to explore science is through nature, outdoors. You can um, explore the bugs, you can explore plants, you can explore animals. Everything to do with biology, you can find outside. You can also do chemical experiments. You can go online. You can even go onto our website and find a bunch of science experiments you can do with your kids. Even simple things like vinegar and baking soda with a little bit of food coloring makes a big impact to a child. Um, you can even go outside at night and look at the stars, look at the moon. So these are all ways you can engage in science. Technology is the next thing you will wanna do. Um, one of my favorite apps is the Google Earth app, and it's a great app to um, engage in technology with your child and teach them something at the same time. Um, there's lots of good things to do on that app. There's also lots of other educational apps out there. If you want a good list of educational apps, check out our website and we have a list there for you. Another simple thing you can do if you don't want to use an app is just do an internet search on your child's interest. So if your child is interested in dinosaurs, you can research different types of dinosaurs on the internet and look up those photos, look up information and pictures, and they'll really have fun doing that. A lot of other fun things you can do on the internet is you can um, visit museums, you can um, go on virtual adventures on the internet, um, and you can just look up different places in the world um, and, and do research on them. So those are all good ways that you can use technology to promote learning. Engineering is the next area and that pretty, um, I love engineering. Engineering is just building and it's creativity. So um, you can take Lego, you can take blocks, you can take blankets, you can use anything to build and you just wanna build anything that your child is interested in. If they wanna build a house, a car, um, a structure, whatever it is they wanna do, that's engineering. Another activity you can do is art. Art basically needs to be free. It needs to be creative. So you're gonna to wanna to look at using different mediums, crayons, um, markers, paint, clay, whatever medium you choose, just make sure it's free and that there's no specific guidelines on what you're making. Just make it um, available for them to be creative, to make whatever they want. Math, math is sometimes daunting for a lot of people, but math can be really easy. And one of my favorite math activities is a measurement activity. So you would take out a measuring tape and you would measure yourself and measure your child and you would do comparisons. So you can measure your hands, you can measure your feet, you can measure your body. 
and basically compare big, small, bigger, smaller, um, count out the numbers on the measuring tape. There's lots of opportunities for math there and lots of opportunities to look at math relationships. So um, math can be simple and it can be fun and there can be a lot of different ways to incorporate that. Our next pillar is physical activity and that's basically you can do that inside or outside but basically moving your body whether you're using balls whether you're riding bikes whether you're playing hide and seek those are all different ways that you can also um, engage in physical activity and the last thing is mindfulness and i say this one last because i love it so much um, and it's something that you can do at the end of the day together so find some quiet time together to be mindful you can create a cozy space somewhere around your house um, that's quiet. You can read a book there. You can bring a small little lamp, um, shut down all the lights, um, play some soft music. You can do some yoga poses together if you like doing that sort of thing. And you can even just take a nap there together. So it's a great place um, in your home where you can be mindful. So most importantly, above all else, of all the tips I've given you today, is to have fun. It's important to enjoy yourself and let your inner child out. Don't be afraid to get silly. The best way to play is to have fun. So to recap what I've said, play is important for young children to build their skills so that they can learn about the world. They can engage in play. There's five things you can do. Follow their lead, engage in conversation, ask open-ended questions, play at their level, and engage in intentional and free play. And remember, have fun while you're doing it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I've been able to give you some insights into how to engage and play with your young child. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can message me here, or you can check out our website, www.alphasdiscoveryclub.com. We post a daily blog on our website there. You can check that out, and there's lots of um, ideas for you on different play experiences you can have with your child. Thanks for joining me today and enjoy this special time with your child. Have a great day.